The hearing will come to order. Today's hearing continues the Committee's ongoing investigation into the reckless program known as Operation Fast and Furious. The Oversight Committee exists to secure two fundamental principles. First, Americans have a right to know that the money Washington takes from them is well spent. And second, Americans deserve an efficient, effective government that works for them. Our duty on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee is to protect these rights. Our solemn responsibility is to hold government accountable to taxpayers, because taxpayers have a right to know what they get from their government. We will work tirelessly in partnership with citizen watchdogs to deliver the facts to the American people and to reform the government's bureaucracy. Thus far, the committee has heard testimony from ATF agents who reported that they were ordered to let guns destined for Mexican car drug cartels to walk away from the hands of known criminals. Today, this committee will have the opportunity to question supervisors of these agents who knew about and believed these tactics were appropriate. The committee will also hear from ATF agents who worked in Mexico and whose who were horrified to learn, ultimately, about this program. The task before the committee is very serious. The acting director of ATF, in a transcribed interview with investigators, has said that the Justice Department is trying to push all of us away from its political appointees. Indeed, the Justice Department continues to withhold key information and has inappropriately interfered with this investigation. Let me be clear. The Justice Department is not our partner in this effort. They are the subject of this investigation, and their continued interference will not be allowed to derail the Committee's work. Last month, members of this Committee traveled to Mexico on a fact-finding mission, where we were briefed on how the U.S and Mexican law enforcement agents are working together to fight the drug lords who are responsible for more than 34,000 deaths in the last four and a half years. That effort cannot be derailed by the, out, the fallout of Fast and Furious. One of our goals is to ensure that the Mexican government can have confidence in its partner here in the U.S. from this day forward that we, in fact, will not let guns walk that we will be as open and transparent as possible. <clears throat> in, in the time ATF officials in Mexico have been increasingly alarmed by both volume and location of weapons that had been recovered, after reporting these concerns to ATF and Justice Department officials in Washington, these agents were told nothing about Fast and Furious. Again, our trip to Mexico City taught us that ATF agents, and more importantly, likely DEA agents and likely two U.S. ambassadors were not informed about a program that was causing an increase in violence and an increase in guns arriving throughout Mexico, from Tijuana to Mexico City to Sonora and beyond. We have before us today witnesses who worked in Mexico for years. And they will tell the committee their frustration about being kept in the dark by officials in Washington and in Phoenix, and about, <clears throat> and about what really happened as a result of Operation Fast and Furious. They are going to have the opportunity to tell this committee about what happens when the Justice Department intentionally lets weapons flow across the border and how Mexican officials reacted when they began to learn the truth. The committee will also offer ATF supervisors the opportunity to publicly explain why they thought it was okay to let weapons flow from Phoenix to Mexican drug, drug cartels without making an effort to interdict them. The committee is eager to know why one particular suspect was permitted to purchase 685 weapons before he was arrested. We are also eager to hear justifications for decisions that have created deep divisions within the ATF and outrage in both the United States and Mexico. 
we have yet to <coughs> we have not yet seen the end of the violence from operation fast and furious the deadly consequences of this irresponsible program could last for years to come today the committee estimates at least 1600 weapons including 50 caliber sniper rifles are still out there waiting to kill the possibility that administration officials perhaps at the highest level of the Justice Department, approve this strategy and are now trying to cover up their own involvement by stonewalling the committee is alarming. Today we are focusing primarily on the effects of Fast and Furious in Mexico. President Obama is keen to talk about who didn't know about the program and who didn't authorize it. But the American people have a right to know once and for all who did authorize it, and who knew about it. The ranking member and I both pledged the Terry family that we would focus our efforts on finding out who was responsible for Fast and Furious. Until we have those answers, the committee will remain focused on these basic questions. And with that, I yield to the ranking member for his opening statement. I want to thank the chairman for this hearing, and um, I want to thank all of our witnesses for your service to our country and for what you do every day to protect so many lives. We have an important responsibility in this committee to thoroughly investigate allegations of waste, fraud, and abuse, and to follow evidence wherever it may lead, and to base our conclusions on the evidence before us. The committee has now been investigating allegations relating to Operation Fast and Furious for five months. Committee staff have conducted 16 transcribed interviews of ATF managers and field agents in Phoenix, Washington, and Mexico. During these interviews, officials at various levels have acknowledged mistakes in the planning, execution, and oversight of this operation. That is most unfortunate. Although key questions remain, I would like to make four points. First, the head of ATF, Acting Director Ken Melson, stated during his transcribed interview on July 4 that he did not become aware of any allegations about so-called gun walking until they were reported publicly. And this is what he said. That issue had never been raised. It had never been raised to our level by the whistleblowers in Phoenix that stayed in-house down there. Second, the officials interviewed by the committee did not support the allegation that the controversial tactics allegedly employed in this operation, such as suspending surveillance or failing to interdict what weapons, were part of a top-down strategy devised by senior ATF management or the Justice Department. Again, actor, Acting Director Melson said that no Justice Department officials ever told him or anyone at ATF that these tactics were part of a new strategy to let guns go. He stated, and I quote, we never discussed those types of tactical strategies, end of quote. William Hoover, the Acting Director of the ATF, is the principal liaison between ATF and the Deputy Attorney General's office. He also rejected this allegation. When asked whether these tactics were part of a top-down policy, he responded, and I quote, No, sir. It is my firm belief that the strategic and tactical decisions made in this investigation were born and raised with the U.S. Attorney's Office and with the ATF and the OSADEF strike force in Phoenix, end of quote. He added, uh, and I quote, There has been reports that Deputy Attorney, the Deputy Attorney General's Office was aware of the techniques being employed in Fast and Furious, that is just not, that's not the case, because I certainly didn't brief them on the techniques being employed." End of quote. Third, although these tactics may not have originated in the headquarters of ATF or the Justice Department, the evidence before the committee indicates that after receiving briefings in March 2010, Deputy Director Hoover and other senior ATF officials became seriously concerned about the number of weapons being trafficked um, by these suspects. As a result, Deputy Director Hoover ordered an, an 
exit strategy, those are, used, those are his words, to close the case and seek indictments within 90 days. Although this exit strategy was developed, there were no indictments until this past January. One question I hope to explore today is why it took nearly 10 months, from March 2010 to January 2011, to close this operation and bring indictments. Finally, nearly all of the officials interviewed by the committee strongly supported additional law enforcement tools to combat the flood of high-powered military-grade assault weapons from the United States into Mexico. Mexico is our neighbor, our ally, and our friend. Yet U.S. weapons are arming the world's most violent and powerful international drug cartels, costing the lives of 40,000 Mexicans in the last four year, five years. While I will continue to work with, the chairman, with chairman Issa to investigate the facts of Operation Fast and Furious, we must also examine opportunities for reform. And I look forward to, again, following the evidence where it may lead. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I thank you, Ranking Member. All members will have seven days to submit opening statements and extraneous material for the record. We now recognize our first panel of witnesses. Darren Gill is a former ATF attache in Mexico. Jose Wall is ATF senior special agent in Tijuana, Mexico. Carlos Canino, I keep doing, I'll get it better in time, is the ATF acting attache in Mexico. Loren Liedman is the ATF team leader field uh, intelligence support team, southwest border. William uh, Newell is the former ATF special agent in charge of the F Phoenix Field Division. And William Mc McMahon, God, I'm having a good day, Mc McMahon is the ATF deputy assistant director for field operations west. And I apologize, as usual, for never getting names quite right. Pursuant to the rules of this committee, all witnesses must be sworn. Would you please rise, raise your right hand to take the oath? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Let the record reflect that all witnesses answered in the affirmative. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, even for this committee, this is a large panel. So uh, if each of you take five minutes, we have 30 minutes. If you take more than five minutes, the guy next to you will also take more than five minutes. So please observe the green, yellow, and red light. Realize that all of any official material or even additional material you choose to submit will be put into the record. So you can uh, provide us what is exactly in your opening statement, which often happens, read in a verbatim way or you can summarize